Hey guys, Mr. here again for another video today, and we are back with another Operation Get Ovi the Cup. And in this one, we will uh, attempt to make a trade. Now, um, I do want to go check free agency really quickly, because I want to see if there's a goalie out there um, that we could sign, just in case. Eh. Not really. Is there anybody potential-wise that we could go out for? I mean, Godlaw and Hallinan, but I don't know if they would really make a trade go through. As for four skaters, I should say. Uh, no, okay, so... Hmm, this should be interesting then. Uh, let's go and try and make a trade. Now, obviously, we ended off the last episode trying to acquire someone by the name of Mark Edward Vlasic from the San Jose Sharks, and I think we are going to try and do that again. Uh, but by doing so, we need to give up on quite the haul. So to start off, we realistically, if we can't get it to go through, I may have to give up on Tom Wilson. But we're going to start off with Orlov uh, and then get Asplund. And then also probably um, Sagenthaler, Sigenthaler, I still don't know how you say his freaking name, man. And then we're going to also have to give them our first in 2020, but we should also give them another um, prospect because I know that won't go through. So let's try Emelyn as well. Uh, so yeah, we do have to bring back skaters though, that's the problem. So uh, players that are not great to come back to this team let's go to players they want to get rid of actually skaters matching the block so eric fair shore ryan reeves shore contracts reeves last year fair also last year okay that's fine with me oh, we actually need to take back another one too okay well um como is he on the last year he is uh, he doesn't have that much value so Will this trade go through? Orlov, Asplund, Sigonthaler, a first, and Emelin for Vlasic, Fair, Reeves, and Como. Proposed trade. Trade rejected. Okay, so we need to give up more. So let's get rid of Emelin. And we'll try someone else. Somebody I did think about trying was selling on Grubauer because... We are going to have to re-sign him at the end of the year, and he's been having a great year, so he could even grow. Well, he's been doing a lot better than Holtby. Not necessarily, he's not necessarily having a great year, but we would have to toss Grubauer in there, then get rid of Como, and then bring back, I guess it would be Svedberg. Not like they need a goalie at all. They have a really good prospect goalie, too. Um, so, yeah, they have Martin Jones at the helm right now. He's doing good. And Anthony Ranta is their backup, but then Grubauer would also be there. But then they also have this Johnny Kern guy who will never make the NHL. He is 19. At, he's got high elite, which I've never seen on a goalie, but he's 52 overall already at 19. There's no way that'll go through, or there's no way he'll make it right. So let's try this trade then, proposed trade. Um, uh, oh, yeah, so this was the trade I tried um, off screen. So that's why it's saying that uh, they already rejected. So that one also doesn't go through. That means I think what I would do is I'd call Siegenthaler, Siegenthaler up to the NHL, and we'd uh, send away Madison Bowie, which is a possibility, but I think that may be the only thing we could do. But that means instead, instead of having to use... Um, Siegenthaler, we could get him, Eric, we could bring back Paul Martin, who is on the last year of his deal. He's a very good defensive defenseman, I know that. Um, he just would not put up points. And what about, uh, what about Siegenthaler, Siegenthaler? I just, I really don't know how you pronounce that name. Uh, let's go and see how good is he. Um, good defensively, okay offensively. Uh, 26 points in the AHL is not that bad. It's better than what he did last season as well. So, you know what? I think having him in the NHL wouldn't be too bad, to be honest. So, 
Yeah, let's try this trade then. Bowie, Grubauer, our first in 2021, Asplund and Orlov for Vlasic, Fair, Reeves, and Svedberg. That would go through. Okay, so um, I think I am going to go through with this trade, although out of curiosity, can I get a draft pick back just because I am uh, on the very minimal end of draft picks? We could get a fifth back. Is there a fourth that they want to give up on? How about their fourth next year? Um, that would go through. All right, so a five-for-five five item trade. Um, let's do it. Orlov, Asplund, our 2021 first, Grubauer, and Madison Bowie for a Vlasic, Fair, Reeves, Svedberg, and a 2020 fourth-round pick. Make it go through. There we go. So that is quite the trade, if you ask me. Um, yeah, that was quite a big trade. So is there anybody I needed to send down? Did he send down Fair and Beagle? Reeves could be our extra forward, I guess. Really don't want Reeves to be our extra forward, so he's just not going to be. Um, as for defensemen, Walensky will stay our extra d defenseman. We'll call Sigon Thaler up. And Fair and Reeves would go on waivers. I mean, I'd be shocked if if they got claimed, honestly. Did they? Uh, wow, they both... Oh, no, Fair didn't get claimed, but uh, Ryan Reeves did, so cool. <laughs> Whatever, it's really not a big deal. I'm okay with that. So let's go back to uh, the NHL lineup. No, oh, no, never mind. He didn't get claimed. I saw that he just... Lost morale for getting sent down. So, uh, Signal Tyler actually went down because of being nervous for the NHL, I'm assuming. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. It shouldn't be that much of a worry. Holtby, our starter, obviously. And then our backup will now be Nicholas Fedberg, who is not a phenomenal backup, but I did need to bring him back, so or bring him back in the trade. So we would have a backup goalie, or else we just wouldn't have one. Um, yeah, so let's uh, let's see what we can do now with with the team. Scratch players, Walensky and Beagle still starting lineup. This is what it'll look like moving forward. Vlasic on that second pair. We have a lot of left-handed shots. Uh, oh, man. I could have Vlasic on the top pair, but I don't think I want to do that. So I'm not going to. I think we'll keep it the way it is. But, uh, yeah, so that is the team now. As for the AHL, I'll just do um, uh, best lines. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, all right. So let's uh, continue on with this sim now because, obviously, that took a lot longer than expected. But, uh, yeah, let's just finish off the sim. We'll sim to the end of the season. Actually, before we do that... Um, let's go and look at some trades, because I don't think I did that. Um, so yeah, let's go and see. Message Center, Player, and Pick Trading. We'll scroll down and we'll look through th through some trades. Shenashin, a first and a fourth to for Stahl and Postma. So Jordan Stahl goes to Boston, Mikhail, or Michael Frolik for Mark Stahl. Um, nice, interesting. A first, second, and Sherratt. Or Mark G or Dan, oh, I'm pretty sure I already saw that. I'm pretty sure I saw the Nyquist trade. Uh, Furland. Furland for Radcliffe, right? Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, okay. And then Silverberg for Strom, okay. Eves for Holden and Colborn. Skinner for Grunstrom in two seconds. Yeah, that's a big load to give up for Jeff Skinner. Justin Williams for a third. Raffle and a fifth. And then, obviously, our trade uh, right there. So we definitely had the biggest trade of the deadline, if you ask me. Now, really quickly, let's just advance the day and see if any other trades go through. Um, just out of curiosity. I mean, I, I like, I'm going to start doing this more, and I do like looking at the trades just to see what happens. So, yeah, we were actually the last trade on the deadline, uh, or at the deadline, I should say. So... Uh, now we can finish off the sim. Will we be able to surpass Pittsburgh? Who knows? Who knows? So let's advance to the end of the season. We should hit 40 wins here shortly. We lose our first two games so far. 
with the Vlasic, so that's not good. Um, okay, where are we scouting right now? Um, doesn't matter, really. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. So we could re-scout other places now. So we're just going to start in the WHL, uh, which I'm going to end the sim real quick. We did hit our 40th win against Edmonton there, so that's nice. Um, but yeah, let's go and now see the draft class, see where we need to scout for uh, top players. Not like we have a top eligible pick, so I guess it doesn't necessarily matter too much. Oh, this is the draft where I have two franchise players going. Uh, I have not shown you guys this yet, I believe. So Hans Ritzel, um, I made... He is an absolute phenomenal sniper. I have not seen how he does in a sim, so that'll be interesting. And then Nico Eskalainen, I made him. Um, I made him from um, uh, from our Vancouver series. Well, I didn't make him for a Vancouver series, but my Vancouver series back in NHL 16, uh, I we drafted Nico Eskalainen first overall, and he was I think 73 at 19 years old out of the draft. And, uh, yeah, he was a low elite, but he turned out to be quite the beast for us. Now, Rich Coyle, don't know who that is. I'm assuming it's just a created player. Jack Hughes, I created. Uh, Nolan Foote, I made a lot better. Still that high top six, though. So Cole Caulfield, I also made better. Uh, Russ Rokan, so... Hmm, there's only a few players here that I actually know. Um, yeah, so that'll be interesting. We will obviously look through the draft when the time comes, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I will definitely look at Nico Eskalainen again. Uh, although, like I said, I'm just not going to go through, um, uh, g or get anywhere near that top part of the draft. Um, imagine, get, oh, if I could get Nico Eskalainen on this team, though, holy frick, we'd have Eskalainen and, um, uh, Backstrom as playmakers for OV, it would be quite crazy, I'm not going to lie, because I have Eskalainen as a phenomenal playmaker, which is what he was, although, I mean, to be fair, in the Vancouver series, he could he could be a playmaker, he could be a sniper, he could be a winger, he could take draws, he could have been a defenseman, for God's sake, he was just really, really good, and I don't know how he was so good, to be honest with you, I just saw Pittsburgh's record, and it is really really good 47 18 and 9 we just handed them their 19th regulation loss so that's interesting will we hit 50 wins this season we have three chances to do so uh, and there we go okay so we finish off the season will it be a win or a loss against the winnipeg jets let's see let's go back to the o defense for two weeks we finish off the season on a little bit of a win streak so that's nice on a four, five, five game win streak heading into the uh, heading into the playoffs. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we are actually eight, one and one heading into the playoffs. So that is good. That's for sure. I'm assuming we didn't finish first though. Um, I, I can't tell from here. I'm assuming Pittsburgh finished ahead of us. Pittsburgh and Columbus in the first round. Obviously, us versus the Rangers in the first round. Then we got Florida and Boston, and then we got Toronto and Tampa. And in the West, we've got Chicago and Edmonton, Vancouver and Vegas. That'll be interesting. Dallas and St. Louis and Mont or not Montreal, sorry, Minnesota and Nashville. Let's go check out our stats really quickly. Wow, Ovi's up to a 97. Jesus. Okay, so we did not finish first, unfortunately. So many extra overtime losses for the Pens. Very interesting. Um, they actually did the best in the East, so that's interesting. But yeah, four teams made the playoffs from the Metro, of course, in the Atlantic. Four teams as well from there. Tampa was actually the worst team in the division, and Toronto was the best. That's interesting. Five teams made it out of the Central. Two teams. Okay, I mean, other than Dallas, that uh, that Central division is not very good somehow. Uh, and then we head over to the Pacific. Edmonton finishing off with 104 points, which is the most. L.A. just shy of the playoffs. And uh, Pittsburgh also won the President's Trophy. I did not mean to go to the East. Yeah, Pittsburgh won the President's. 
Uh, top four teams in the league were all in the Eastern Conference, so that's interesting. Let's go and check out our point totals now. Ovi with 54 goals, uh, Nachushkin with 34, so that's pretty good. His stats, he's up to an 89 now as well. I just realized that was a sweet pickup, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Christian Juice had 62 points. That surpassed his total last season, right? Yes, it did. Just by a couple of points. Where is Carlson? Carlson, he had how many? Uh, 56, uh, tying his se or his point total from last season, which is not bad, obviously. So, yeah, Ovi with 54 goals, another 50-goal season for him. That is two in a row, I believe, right? Yeah, he had 63 last year. I forgot about that. Um, so let's just see. That, that top line... Backstrom and Ovi had 70 goals combined, then Nachushkin adding on to that. So that top line scored 104 goals. That is really good. Um, okay, that is absolutely unreal. Nachushkin and Backstrom, though, we're, not, we're unable to get point per game, uh, which kind of sucks. I'm surprised about that, to be honest. Kuznetsov with 61 points on that second line for the, for the most of the part of the season with Burakovsky and Wilson. How did Zadina do? He's up to an 82 now, listed as a third liner. Only 10 goals for him, though. Uh, out of our forwards, there were only two players that did not hit double digits, which was Bozak and Reeves, although he's not actually on the team. So the only one that actually didn't hit double digits was Bozak, which is interesting. Uh, plus minus wise, plus 34 for Ovi is the highest plus minus. Um, on the forward core defensively juice finished off the team uh, or finished off the season with the most points on the team at 62 Carlson 56 Lucas Johansson is actually a beast guys uh, he had 41 Vlasic had 35 which isn't too bad how, how did he do the last season 39 I did make his stats a lot better because he does actually put up points in the NHL like he usually puts around that 30 to 40 uh, 30, 30 to 40 point mark so I did make his stats a little bit more two way and offensively uh, capable Marcus Nudivara didn't do bad and Siegenthaler uh, 5 points in 19 games in the NHL that's actually not too bad either as for the goaltending Holby did not do great Svedberg uh, only played 7 games with us he didn't do very good either so that's interesting let's go and check out the entire league now Frederick Anderson with the most uh, wins. So that's pretty good. Igor Shestyork, and I made him. He's a good backup goalie. 945 save percentage in 23 games. Yeesh. Let's sort this by a minimum of 50 games. We'll see. So best save percentage went to Vasilevsky with a 926. And he also had the best GAA, I would assume. Um, yes, he did. So Vasilevsky, even though Tampa finished last in the division or in their division uh he was the best goalie this year uh maybe matt murray it's a possibility <coughs> i tried fighting off that sneeze but it did not work sorry guys <laughs> oh man but uh yeah so let's go check out um forwards now let's see um uh nope not actually let's sort of buy uh one game again Make sure it's just sorted normally. Um, there we go. Okay, so most points in the league goes to Braden Shen. 106 points. What a beast. He was almost point per game just by ex by, just from ex assist. No, assist. Jesus, I am <laughs> struggling right now. McDavid, the only other uh, 100 point man this season with 56 goals, without which will beat out. OV, although Tarasenko will beat out the both of them with 61 fucking goals. Holy shit. Wow, so, I mean, other than OV, the top 10... Uh, the top 10. Whoa, I just realized Drake Kajula is up to an 86 and had 89 points this season. Holy frig. That is crazy. <clears throat> okay. Other than Ovechkin, out of like the top 15, everybody's in the in the West for the most points. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 
in the top 15 in the or in the top 14 in the league there's only one person um from the east in uh the point race that is crazy most goals will go to tarasenko so ov not able to get the more reach for shard of course most assists goes to Braden Shen, best plus minus as a forward, goes to Malkin with a plus 46. I cannot believe Kajula is up to an 86. Holy frig. Uh, defensively, Norris could go to Hamilton. I don't know. It's close. Uh, Christian Juice may be able to get the Norris. He had a much better plus minus than Dougal, Doug, Dougal? <laughs> Dougie Hamilton. Oh, that'll be interesting to see. That's for sure. I'd love to see Juice win it. That would be awesome, dude. Most goals as a, def as a defenseman goes to Burns with 20. Most assists as a defenseman goes to Juice with 56. And the highest plus minus as a defenseman goes to Justin Schultz with a plus 43. That top pair over there in, uh, in um, Pittsburgh did absolute wonders for them. Uh, the best rookie skater was Owen Tippett with 65 points, although Casey Middlestat also had 65 points. Eli Tolvanen had uh, 34 goals. I'm assuming led the rookies in scoring. Yes, he did. Not too bad. I don't think I made his shot that good, but I know I made Tippett's very good. Uh, middle stats is also good. Elias Pedersen was a rookie this year. He's up to an 87. Holy Jesus. So Tippett's a rookie. Middle stat. Liljegren, he did pretty good. Uh, Pedersen, Andrei Svechnikov. Jankowski's a rookie this year. Adam Gaudet's also a rookie, not rusky. Uh, Jordan Kairou, Evgeny Sveshnikov, Brady Tachuk, Rasmus Dallin, uh, Zach Aston Reese, Kirill Kaprizov, Dennis Gurionov, Sam Steele. How good is he? I did change him to a low lady, 77. Jesper Bratt, Brett Howden, Dante Fabro. How good has he done? He's an 80 right now. Interesting. Rookie goalies? Any rookie goalies out there? Eric Comrie. Um, Grubauer's apparently a rookie. That's just not true. Neither is Saros, who's in 87 now. Okay. Uh, I did change his potential to a low elite, but I have never seen him get that good. Wow. Oh, oh, I didn't even think about that. Igor Shestyorkin may totally take home the Calder. A 945 save percentage and a 1.71 GAA in 23 games played. He had three shutouts. I mean, I'd say it would go to him or tip it. That'll be interesting to see, though. So, I just spent so long looking at stats there. Um, I'm going to end the episode here, guys, on the uh, bracket, as you can see. Thank you all so much for watching. Tune in in the next one to, uh, or for year number two of the playoffs, hopefully, to get Ovi his cup. Thank you all so much for watching once again, and we'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.